You could say Harley's part of the new lineup. Here's your look at the Cryptozoic Entertainment Harley Quinn Mugshot Bust. The Harley Quinn Mugshot Bust depicts the mayhem-loving villainess after she has been captured by Gotham City PD. This meticulously sculpted and hand-painted bust stands approximately 7 inches tall and is individually numbered. It also comes with a certificate of authenticity. It was designed by Jay Fenrix and also sculpted by Jean St. Jean. The packaging totes this, I believe it being seven inches in height. I'm gonna go ahead though and take the Ultra Measuretron 5000 and I'm gonna put it right to the very top of Harley Quinn's head, specifically the side pigtails that she's sporting. And I'm gonna stop it right there. It's actually almost seven inches in height, being actually 6.8 inches exactly. And switching that to centimeters because somebody in the audience is yelling, centimeters, what about centimeters? Centimeters it is, fine chap. 17.3 centimeters tall is the Harlequin Mugshot Bust. I reckon the first thing we'll have a look at in this review is the certification card, the one that certifies right down below here that this Mugshot Bust is an official limited edition statue produced by Cryptozoic Entertainment. One thing you probably also notice up at the top there is it's a second edition. It's gone around a second time so successful and so cool is this statue bust that Cryptozoic has done it a second time. And perhaps even like Superman, going around the Earth, reversing the rotational spin of Earth to reverse time. I don't know how that's possible. But needless to say, perhaps we may see this go around a third time. It's a pretty neat looking bust. Looking forward to having a look at it a little bit more in depth. This one happened to go around the Earth 1,875 times. Or maybe this statue just happens to be 1,000. 875 out of 3,000. 3,000 of the limited edition release. That's what the back of the card looks like. And we'll put that right to the side. The other thing that comes included with this is something, of course, that will finish off rather nicely the back of the bust. And that is the little wall marker. When you do go up for a lineup and they take your photo, perhaps I'm sharing this story with individuals that haven't been in that scenario. I know certainly I haven't. We'll live vicariously through Harley Quinn here. She does come with though the lineup numbering system, which as you can see has been graffitied, likely by her. There's a few kissy kissy marks, one right there, one right there. There's kill bats, Mr. J with a little heart and arrow going through it. Oh, that's nice. We're coming up to Valentine's Day, so it's nice that we can share the love and there's, a, of course, ha 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 ha. A rather nice, slightly discolored card deliberately down below there. Uh, there's what the back of it looks like. Nothing really finishing off the back section of it other than just for the fact it's brown cardboard. And it will attach to the back of the stand. Now, where it attaches, though, there's this little notch. Well, this little notch here located on the back of the hat or back of the stand. It does kind of look like an old vintage 
uh, police officer's helmet or the cap that they would wear. Nonetheless, this is the stand in which she's perched atop of. And there's, like I said, that little notch that's featured on the back there. You're supposed to take the card and you're supposed to just fit it down the slot. That's it. That's all that's required. Unfortunately, as you probably already saw, it doesn't stay in place that well. Now, it doesn't help and aid this much that I'm also holding it in my hand. If, for example, I put the card slotted into her back of the display stand like that, and she was already on display, it wouldn't be so much the issue. It doesn't really stay, like I said, well. And one thing I would hope, or one thing maybe that they could do for a future release, is actually widen this. It doesn't have to be to the eyesore level, which you would see it past if you're looking at it this way. I don't certainly expect it to be out this wide, but at the very least, even if it was, say, this wide, still hidden from the front and giving you enough of a clasp that it would hold this a little bit better in place. As it stands right now, it's a very small closure. And like I said, unless you've got it dead right, it's not going to stay in place very well. And I have to say and stress for the fact that it doesn't also help for the fact I'm holding it. I want to say that as well. If you had this simply just on a desk, you wouldn't probably have as much the issue as this reviewer is because he's obviously holding it in his hand. There's what it does look like. I think what I may do, though, is for the some slight part of this review, a fraction of the overall review, I might actually just take this right off so that I can just sort of spin the figure around, spin the bust around so that you guys can get better looks without the card unfortunately falling off in the process. But that's what the finished product looks like. Looks pretty schnazzy, I have to admit. But I'm going to go ahead and just like take the card off and I'm just going to put it right there. It's not going anywhere. Nobody get upset. It's still going to be there. It's going to be right where we left it. It's okay, Johnny. It was right where we left it. Let's have a look at the bust. As we were discussing before, here's what the bottom base of the bust looks like. It has Gotham City Police Department founded in 1820. While the majority of the lower part of the base is all a matte black, by the way, there's the under area of it as well, noting uh, 1875 out of 3000. Yours will vary. I would hope yours will vary from 1875. It shouldn't be the exact same as mine. But otherwise, other than the black presentation of a matte black paint, you are, however, treated to the nice raised elevation of the police badge down below. It does, again, kind of look like the old police caps, something that they would walk around with, spinning their batons, likely having a very broad mustache on their face as well. Look at me developing all these stories in my mind. Yay, imagination. As we move further up the stand, you can see how her torso has sort of just been put on top of a little pegged pedestal. I do like that they've given her real chains, real metal chains, and as you can see, she is shackled via two, a pair of handcuffs, a matching pair. Well, one pair, a matching bracelet on both sides. One thing I do really like about the statue, and we'll talk a little bit certainly more about it as we delve deeper into it, is I like the roughed up nature of Harley Quinn. It really plays into the fact that, you know, she's been apprehended and she doesn't, of course, much like most mug shots, celebrity mug shots are always the most comical, is that they never really look all that great. Of course they don't look great. They're posing in front for a police mug shot. But before we kind of get into that a little bit further, I want to talk a little bit about the marker card that she is holding in her hand. Featured, it says Gotham City Police Department 154-679-8001. And I suspect that is a 1, even though the paint looks like it's slightly unfinished on the side. One thing I do low like is that it's all raised, elevated. You can feel it even, like if you ran your finger across it. Ah, that's relaxing. You can see that the card isn't attached to her in any way, shape, or form other than just really for her fingers. I suppose you should be a little bit careful when uh, positioning this, that this doesn't fall. I always like to stress, and stress probably not being the greatest of words to be using, but I like to always stress the most fragile components of statues. This one here probably would be the awarded part, is this little placard that she's holding in her hand. She is very tattered. She is not necessarily bruised, but you can certainly see that she's been escorted away, likely against her will, and she just is a mess for it. I like that she is, despite all that, still smiling. 
Perhaps the craziness has set in. Perhaps she realizes that the Joker is going to be on his way very likely very soon to bust her out of prison. I like that her mask, or, well, the under area of her mask, of course she is sporting her mask, but I like that the coloring, the darkened areas around her eyes have now dripped their way through, on both sides, in fact. The coloring is close enough to the mask, but luckily being that the mask is sculpted atop of her face, you sort of can see by texturing alone and the detailing alone that the mask is on top of it and that the trickled out, I don't know what she would be using, mascara or an eyeliner pen, uh, would have trickled its way out from there. Again, she does look like she has probably had an all night chasing or being chased by the uh, Gotham City Police Department and now has certainly been apprehended. Like even her outfit lends itself to the fact that Again, you got a few rips there on her shoulders, a few ripped away areas there on the sides of her arm. Even like her hair has been slightly tussled. How about that for a word to be using in a, a collectible review? Tussled. But her hair is very messed up. I still like, despite all that, you can still see the dyed areas there, the black and the corresponding red on the other side. Even like her bangs get a little bit of that as well. Now this is the second edition wondering of course in the back of my mind what did the first edition look like ironically enough if i just reach off to the side here's what the box looked like uh, the box initially had what i can see to be blonde hair an all blonde haired harley quinn i'm wondering and i will have to do some researching after the fact i'm wondering if maybe the initial release of harley quinn did sport no black nor red which would lend itself well to the notion of wanting to pick up a second release. If simply it was just a, we're re-releasing the exact same figure, of course, that works well to people that haven't picked it up, but you want to get a little extra dub and double dipping in there for people that maybe hadn't picked it up, or I should say have already picked it up, that perhaps maybe the second edition did have the featured dyed areas, which the first edition didn't have. Just a theory that I have, uh, minus, of course, pending, of course, further looking into it. Again, I do really like her head sculpt. It's a little bit playful. Again, I do like that little bit of smirk that she's got in there. A nice little extra bit of red, little bit of red paint that's been added in there as well, just to kind of, so it's not just all black and all white. And her eyes are, again, nicely painted in there as well. Uh, she's not an overly heavy statue by any stretch of the imagination. You could probably gauge by the fact that she is such a small looking statue that she's not that heavy either. She takes up a very small footprint on a display shelf and really ideal for anybody that has been collecting Harley Quinn pieces and just looking for that one unique Harley Quinn piece. I think this specific bust statue fits the bill for that extra neat extra unique looking collectible that you can add to your existing Harley Quinn collection. Cryptozoic Entertainment initially had Harley Quinn the mugshot bust here scheduled for Q1 2017 release. If you are looking at your calendars currently, you already know it's Q1 2019, so this mugshot bust has been on the market for about two years now. It would probably also explain why they've got a second edition of her, likely selling out of the first, not sure what the first run was, but we know that the second run is slated at only 3,000 copies. Interested in picking this one up for yourself? Don't blame you. You can source her out on most online stores or ranging prices from around $45 to $65. You can, of course, shop around until you find a price point that works best for your wallet, but on average, expect to pay about a $40 to $65 price for Harley Quinn here. It's also to note as well that this is the first in the series of the Mugshot bus. Harley Quinn is. Uh, with Batman, certainly extensive rogues gallery. There's a lot of different characters that they can pick and pluck and add to the lineup here, literally and figuratively, uh, the Mugshot bus. Ones that certainly are coming to mind right now are Poison Ivy and Catwoman. I would be thrilled to see how both of those would be approached in this same lineup. Uh, one thing I like particularly about this is it's small. I have already a pretty extensive Harley Quinn collection, and I like this one because it's small. It doesn't take up a whole lot of space, but it's ch it's packed full of details, and you don't often see criminals like this in sort of a worsened state. 
you can see that the paint or makeup I should say on Harley Quinn's face has run her hair is sort of tussled and uh, her costume is a bit torn up it's not what we normally expect to see with these villains which I think only adds to the more even adds more to the charm of what these mugshot busts uh, turn out to be either way again if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself it's really just a matter of sourcing out online markets or if you may luck out you may be able also to find this at your local comic book stores as well either way today we were having a look at the cryptozoic this was the mugshot bust of harley quinn to also note as well it was the second edition run of her also hey now you want to go back and have a look at some of my other cryptozoic entertainment reviews don't blame you did you know there's a playlist on this channel specifically for cryptozoic entertainment ah <laughs> you do now and learning is half the battle make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming soon to this channel and as always guys thanks for watching see you next time